This is James Hoda for IFL TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. With me, I've got Macklin. <laughs> How are you doing, all right? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Good. First and foremost, I just want to thank you for your help in getting behind our company as you have. The last probably four months have been, everything seems to be coming to fruition. So yeah, yeah. it's probably a big, a big help from yourself well, while that is. You know? well, you're welcome. You work hard and you put the message out there and you spread the word and you do a good job. So no, glad, glad for you. You didn't get the Vegas trip. No, no, did I, did I? Fuck. No, no such luck. Um, <coughs> yeah, so we're here in Manchester today for the press conference. Um, Scott Quigg against Stefan Jamoy. Good fight in the Manchester card. What, what brings you out today? Well, obviously I'm training in Manchester now with Joe Gallagher, so uh, uh finished early. Joe had to come to the press conference, so I'm, I'm only staying around the corner anyway, so I, I thought I'd have a little gander down and... See what's being said, get the little buzz for the fight the weekend. Indeed, indeed. Any thoughts of opponent for your fight? I know you're fighting in Hamburg on the Sowlin card. Just waiting for it to be confirmed. Um, should be t oh, um, today or t you know tonight, I'm expecting it to be confirmed. Um, I think there was talk of it being a guy called Ronnie Mittag, who's, I think, 21-1, and one, something, something like that. Good record, anyway. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about Floyd Mayweather, Mar first Marcus Magdana, coming up on Saturday at the MGM. What, how do you see this one playing out? Difficult to know. Um, last time he obviously gave him a good fight, but I think you know he definitely won the fight, Floyd. I think uh, as the fight work, as the fight uh, went on, he um, he worked him out. You know, he started to time him, started to read him more, and um, you know he he definitely pulled away in my opinion and won the fight comfortable enough in the end. But um, but Dana certainly gave him problems early on, and I think he's rough has tactics and the way he kind of throws that hammer-like right hand. Floyd kind of found that hard to defend against and uh, his defence is one of his best attributes. I mean, that, the way his reflexes and his shoulder roll and how relaxed he's on the ropes. It, it, he's like a bar of soap. He can't really hit and clean, you know. He's a pull on everything, doesn't he? Definitely. He's, he's so hard to nail clean. But uh, that, that right hand that Madonna throws is almost like a hammer. He, he, he kind of found that hard to defend against and, uh, you know, he really brought the heat, really brought an intensity to his, his, his work, uh, Madonna did, and uh, he can definitely punch. Mm -hmm. And I think he made it uncomfortable in there for Mayweather, but Mayweather showed the great fight reason, worked him out and found a way to win. This time now, there's two ways of looking at it. Madonna's going to believe even more that he can win the fight than he did the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to take a lot of confidence from that. So he could be better. But, but I think, you know, complacency is such a, a funny thing. It, it, you can try and inspire all the rounds you want, but if subconsciously you're not really fearful of losing, you don't think that this guy's good enough to beat you, you, you can underestimate them. And I, and I think that might have happened with Floyd with, with Madonna the first time. This time I don't think it'll happen. I think he, he knows. A bit like the Castillo fight the first time. I think maybe there's going to be better. You know, the first time Castillo probably, possibly beat him and didn't get it. Um, this, the second time he, he won more or less every round. So uh, I, I think it's probably going to be more like that. I think, you know, Floyd... He can, he can, he's not bothered about making it boring. If he has to make it boring to win comfortably, he will. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happens. Do you think that's testament to how good Floyd actually is? Um, it is really. I mean, you know, it's nice to be exciting and be in great fights and everything. And But if you, if you, winning, at the end of the day, you're there to win. And uh, he, he can, uh, he'll always find a way to win. And sometimes it's exciting. The styles mesh, and sometimes you know he has to be quite negative and uses his, his speed and his movement, and it's a bit putt shut in, and it's not necessarily the most exciting thing to watch. But at the same time, I think you can uh, you can sort of uh, enjoy his brilliance, you know, as well. A lot of people talking as if it's a foregone conclusion that Floyd's going to win. I think I think Chino's going to come and have it, and he's definitely going to take heart from the first fight, isn't he? If he doesn't win, it won't be for want of trying, and it won't be for the lack of belief. You know, he's going to. Uh, he's definitely going to give it everything. He's definitely going to make. You know, th th how easy he found it to get to Floyd. I mean, mm. maybe we're not giving him enough credit for, for speed of foot himself. He was able to close the distance and really get on top of him, and then you know, like I say, he he, he kind of punched from funny angles, whereby it was hard for Floyd to to use the shoulder roll defense that he uses so well. Um, you know, mate, mate, mate listen, he. he, he the other thing that I didn't even mention, you know, yeah. Floyd's what, 37 now? Is he 37? Yeah. You know, it it's doesn't, come to this. doesn't matter who you are, you, you get older, your reflexes slow down, that's just, that's a fact. And Floyd does rely on reflexes and he doesn't just rely on them, he's a great, he's a clever fighter and he's a great fighter and he reads it well and all the rest of it. But, you know, like Roy Jones was a reflex fighter and once the reflex left him, he started getting chinned left, right and centre. 
you know, um, I don't think that I think Mayweather's more complete than Roy Jones because he's not just a speed merchant, he's not just a reflex fighter, he's a clever fighter. He's the full package really, he can stand and fight as well. But definitely his speed and reflexes are big strong strengths of his, you know, big real good strengths of his. So, you know, if that as that does start to leave him, he he'll be I don't think he'll be quite the fighter he he, he was and uh, you know, Madonna's fresher, he's younger, so you know, who knows? It's it's, it's an intriguing fight. I think um you know, it could go a lot of ways. That brings me into the next thing. I was going to say, how does it, how does this Floyd Mayweather compare to the one that Ricky Hatton would have fought probably seven years ago? But you've, you've kind of answered that already. Yeah, you'd, I mean, you'd, you'd think you'd, you'd think that Floyd was probably better then than he is now, but you don't know because you know when footballers retire a lot of the times because their leg they play a lot of matches over so many years and their legs are gone, their pace leaves, and when their pace leaves, they're not they're not the same. Then you got other foot players like the likes of Paul McGrath. Played for Villa and uh, Ireland. He was like, he, he, his knees were gone for years, and he was the best defender in, in what was Division One. Then wasn't it? He was the best. He was the best player defender going because his brain, he read it so well. Yeah. Um, Bernard Hopkins is nearly fifty. The alien. But he, he he's, he's so clever. He reads boxing so well that, and he looks after himself as well, which obviously helps. But you know, he reads it so well that it, speed and read it doesn't come down to that. He dictates, he controls it, he keeps it at the pace that he's comfortable with. He's good enough to do that. So, you know, like I said about footballers, when they're, they're, you know, they're, they're the ones who rely on pace, the legs go, they're finished. Where, you know, boxing, you, you can still do your road work. Yeah, speed, unless you're a Roy Jones one that relies on speed, then if you're a clever fighter or you're more of a, you know, an intense fighter, and a physically strong fighter, you're probably, probably better as you get a bit older into your 30s because I think you're definitely a stronger man when you're in your early 30s than you probably are in your early 20s. But you're probably not as quick. But, you know, it's, you're, you're a lot more experienced. So you might lose in one area and gain in another. So it's just difficult to gauge, to gauge that with Mayweather's. We, we don't know. So, I mean, the one that fought Hatton was a hell of a fighter, but the one that fought Canelo was a hell of a fighter as well. So, right, right. you know, it's, um, it's difficult to know, isn't it? Last but not least, coming through this, if he does do a job on Maidana as expected, what fight could really cement his legacy as probably the greatest ever, in your opinion? I mean, if the Pacquiao fight doesn't happen, it'll be a slight stain, won't it? A little I think bit it's 65, six years too late for that fight now. I think, I, think, I think 2010 was probably the time when it should have happened, when mm. Pacquiao was really at his peak in terms of popularity, when he was fighting Clatty and Margarita. Mm-hmm. I think that would have been the, it would have been at its biggest then. But, you know, since then, he's... He's lost to was it Bradley, and he's been knocked out by Marquez. So it's definitely like the shine's gone off him a little bit. Um, but you know, it's still, it's still, they're still probably the two best fighters of the, our generation, the last 25 years. And if they don't fight each other, you know, it's, the, it's our Leonard Hagler. If they don't fight each other, it's a bit, you know, a, a little bit. Yeah, I, I think you know that's. I hope that happens. Would I don't you watch know. him in their late forties knocking, knocking it. Uh, no, you don't team. want it to be a Bernard Hopkins, Roy Jones rematch. Who cares when they fought each other? Do you know, he's like, who cares? Yeah, that's right. You know where? You know, I don't think it's, it's not lost it yet. I think there's still time. It can, if it happens, you know, Pacquiao's boxing. When's he boxing? Chris Algieri in China. Yeah, you know, if he, if he does a number and looks good, and maybe it looks good in this one, I think they've got to do it then, man. If they don't do it. Coffee. No point. Failing Pacquiao, what what other big fights would cement his legacy, in your opinion? Um, I mean, he could step up and become middleweight champion. Oscar the lawyer did it, uh, so that'd be you know to win a world title at like middleweight when he started at super feather would be incredible, pretty special. Incredible. And Oscar done it, so he, and I think Floyd could do it. But you know, because try, I'm trying to think who else is Does it, he's beating everyone else, isn't he? Carlo Canelo, he's beating everyone really. So I think apart from apart from fighting Pacquiao I think the next best thing for him to do would be probably step up and win a title at middleweight right, Well listen Matthew Macklin I can't thank you enough for giving me some interview and, and everything you do for us in general I really do appreciate it sir Cheers. And hopefully we get a chance to catch up while I'm in yep, Manchester Definitely Thank you very Same. much Matt